I'm Jim Critchlow, and I'd like to talk about the image Natural Magic. Natural Magic is a 1905 watercolor and pencil portrait by Eleanor Fortescue Brickdale. She's normally categorized with the pre-Raphaelite techniques of the 19th and 20th centuries. That school of painters utilized bright colors and painted subjects and natures in idealized ways, hearkening back to the days of King Arthur and the Round Table. There tends to be an opposition in those paintings of industrialization and modernization as encroachments onto nature's turf. Historicism is emphasized. The artwork's title, Natural Magic, is from a Robert Browning poem which Bricktail was commissioned to illustrate. I'm certain that uh, she was a Christian and she rejected magic as antithetical to the biblical worldview. As individuals, we observe and interpret based on our own presuppositions and points of view. Now, about my presuppositions and points of view, I want to admit that I'm a Christian, I'm an evangelical, I'm a very uh, happily, very married husband of a silver-haired wife. Our experience helps me to interpret this uh, uh, artwork with a very optimistic viewpoint. Now, the details of the painting. The major subject of the portrait is the woman, whom I will call Nature Girl, seated in front of a man who is kneeling, facing her, and leaning on her lap. She's holding a golden circlet, or crown, in her outstretched hands held only inches above his head. She's red-haired, wearing a red and gold knit cap with roses at the temple. Her eyes are looking down on his kneeling form, but she has no discernible expression. She wears a red shawl with tassels around her shoulders that stretches all the way down to her knees. Her green dress is split front and rear surmounting a cream-colored camisole. Her sleeves, wrist, and hem are embroidered with red bows and decorations. Through the nine-paned window above um, the kneeling form of the man, uh, with, of course the, kneeling, the, the window has no glass, grows a rose vine that encircles her and extends down her side. The roses are in full flower as they grow close beside her. Interestingly, there seem to be no thorns at all on the vine. Rested or fluttering on that vine are eleven different kinds and colors of birds, then six butterflies of different sorts, and finally the twenty-four open roses on the side opposite the man. The floor is wood-planked, uh, with loose straw and a three-leg milk stool in the foreground. A pot or a jug is behind her shoulder here. The single bed she is seated on has a simple patchwork quilt uh, which is more suited for a man than for a woman. The man has his arm encircling the, her waist in the foreground toward the rose vine. His opposite hand is cupped at his mouth, and the expression on his face seems to be of love, amazement, and wonder. His eyes are focused upward on her, and his brown tunic and reddish-brown breeches, which are patched at the knee, appear to be leather or canvas without pockets. He has a narrow belt wrapped around his waist, and his sleeves are turned back as a cuff. For both humans, only the two faces and four hands are unclothed. Her hair is combed, his is not. His leather boots and moccasins seem comfortable but not deeply worn. Neither person has jewelry of any kind. The embrace, in my opinion, is idyllic, familiar, and intimate but not overtly erotic. The birds and butterflies act as a dispersed halo around her body. The room has at least one more opening, and I'm going to suggest a door as well, because a four-paned window is reflected in the circlet. You have to look very carefully right there. Now, this is my interpretation. I interpret natural magic as a proposal of marriage between a man and his wife-to-be. This is surely his bedroom, so the crown is likely symbolic since coronations are not done in bedrooms but in public. The man's posture reflects his devotion to the woman with whom he hopes to entwine his future. His working clothes are simple in comparison to her elegant attire. 
she summons nature to his service, symbolized by the rose vine without thorns, birds, and butterflies. Her headdress suggests an authority based on her bearing and stature and enables her to honor him. The woman honors the man with her stylized commitment by agreeing to his proposal. I believe the painter, uh, Brickdale, intentionally depicted the cross in the crown that he's about to wear. It's in the commitment of these two under the authority of that cross and crown that gives the vibrant colors and intimate postures their true meaning. Apart from the love of Jesus Christ for his created order, order, marriage is only a conjugal act devoid of the promise of a future crown. But a marriage of believers in Jesus Christ fulfilling the requirements of leave, cleave, and one flesh from uh, the Genesis mandate should result in a lifelong, heterosexual, monogamous, exclusive, and happy marriage. Now, you may not see this uh, water painting the same way that I do. The validity of your interpretation would depends on your understanding of the painter's intention reflected in the details. I would really enjoy hearing your thoughts or reading your thoughts. Um, we may have to wait till we get to heaven to meet Eleanor Fortescue Brickdale to find out what she intended. But you can email me at jcritchlow at gcts.edu. Thank you.